Um, well, in 1990, I was appointed uh, the you know the first development officer that the you know the Auckland League started back back in those days, and I sort of moved into coaching um, you know a rep team every year, like a development team, and uh, like I like I'd coached teams before that. I'd you know been a player coach in the bush in Australia, and uh, you know I like coaching, so it was just a good way to keep your hand in. And uh, it sort of grew from there. When the Warriors started, I took their, you know, their under twenty team. It was, you know, a, it was a team that played in the Lion Red Cup at that stage, and you know, I held that position for three years. And then I went back to coaching, you know, at a local level, and you know, went back to my club, Man Albert, and coached them, you know, all the way through. And you know, then I went back to the Warriors and got got the job as assistant coach of the NRL side and. You know, when that finished, I just, you know, I moved into the, um, you know, to coaching the juniors. So, you know, for the last four years I've done that. You know, I've done that, you know, that role off and on, but I've also coached, you know, men's teams and, you know, it hasn't just been a performance coach thing. Uh, well, I did all the coaching courses that I could do, you know, early on. Um, I was, like, I was lucky. I think I always had good coaches myself. Um, you know, and they inspired you to, you know, to take up the coaching. You learn a lot off them. You learn, you know, you learn a lot as you go along. Um, you know, you learn a lot off other coaches. Uh, you learn a lot by, you know, by reading books about coaches and, you know, I'm watching documentaries on, you know, on all kinds of sports. So it's an ongoing thing. I think if you're coaching, you've got to be a lifelong learner and uh, stick at it. Look, you enjoy the company. Um, you know, you enjoy being around young people. I think that's a good, you know, it's a good thing for anyone to, you know, to try and live their life around as many young people as you can. Um, I've enjoyed seeing a lot of them grow up and, you know, mature into good, you know, into good men. Um, like, I've enjoyed, you know, watching them have success and, you know, and set themselves up and that sort of stuff. And, you know, another, actually, like I was singing the other day, like another thing I've enjoyed is even the kids that haven't, you know, that haven't gone on necessarily, a lot of them are still involved in the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that means that you haven't burnt them you know, along the way, and it also means that the game's getting a payback for what they've put into them, so, you know, even though they mightn't have turned into big stars, they're, you know, they're now leaders at their club, they're, you know, they're coaching themselves, or they're, you know, they're on committees and that sort of stuff, you know what I mean, they're, you know, they're putting back into it, and I think in a small sport like rugby league, I think that's, that's incredibly important, you know, because we haven't got a lot of resources to, you know, to waste. Oh, look at the last level I was at at NRL, I think the biggest challenge is to hold on to your job, you know, I think that's a challenge sometimes. Um, I enjoy the, you know, I enjoy the competition side of it, like I enjoy the competing, I think that becomes a little bit of a drug with you. Um, there's always challenges, mate, there's, you know, there's things like travelling's a challenge, you know, like... Uh, like planning training is a challenge, you know, trying to improve the boys is a challenge. I think you've got to be continually, like, self-critical and, you know, always be looking to improve. I think that's, uh, and it's hard, and it's easy to lose sight of that. You know, it's sometimes easy amongst the hurly-burly to, you know, forget about the big things and, and uh, you know, I think, you know, constant improvement you know, as a challenge, and the other big challenge probably for coaches is to try to divorce the result from how to fix them. You know, I think you've got to put the players players first, which is hard to do sometimes. Like when you're coaching a younger group, I think you have to be mindful that they've got a life outside their sport, and you're you know, you're conscious of of the demands that you make on them. 
I think you've uh, you know you've got to try to put their game or their you know their uh, commitment to the game in the context of a wider life. You know, like a lot of them are starting out in life and they've got things like studies and uh, jobs and um, you know all that sort of stuff that they've got to get on top of as well. So you know you can't make the same demands that you can make on a full time pro. You know. Um, like I think that kids should have the chance to, you know, develop as a total person. I, you know, I don't think sports should be everything in their lives at the age of 18 or 19. And, you know, in fact, the best players I've ever coached have been, you know, they've been all rounders. They've been boys that are, you know, can, you know, can compartmentalise things, you know, extremely well. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so I, you know, I think you've just got to accept like some of the demands and I think if you're reasonable I think you but like uh, you get a lot more back anyway like in the long run you know when you're looking for a young person coming through there's the obvious things like their physique and their speed and and their skill but I think an underestimated thing is actually love of the game and you know and a love of playing and a love of training and that sort of stuff I think that the demands placed on full-time guys now are that much that unless you really love it, like you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna persevere with it. So, love is a very neglected thing. I mean that, you know, in terms of loving the game. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Sonny Bill Williams, for example. Well, like one of the things that struck me about him, you know, from the age of ten was, you know, is how much he loved playing. Like I can remember him going to you know, to school carnivals with Oaraka Primary School and playing, you know, every game, you know, for every team, like as a standard two kid, you know, um, like he played all day. And and that's, you know, I think that's one thing that the great players have genuinely got in common, you know, you know, of all sports really is a, you know, is a real love of it. And, um, yeah, you know, I think it's a, like it's an underrated thing. Um, well, I think you can rationalise success, <laughs> you know, because we all love to win, and and I'm certainly playing to win. I'm, you know, you want the boys to win, um, you know, but I think at the same time you've got to be, like, you've got to be looking for improvement, and I think the irony of that is that, you know, that, that uh, like, if you can put the result to one side, and the more you concentrate on improvement and and the individual you know, like getting better, then I think your team gets better, and I think you win more games. All right, so that's that's a, um, not that's an immediate, you know, kind of thing, you know, to look at. But another thing in a longer term view, again, as I said before, is you know it's quite cool to see boys you've coached, like coaching teams now, and. You know, even though they mightn't have turned out to be the greatest players in the world, they're certainly putting something back into the sport. And, you know, that's how things are sustained, you know. And uh, that's that's cool too. Yeah, if I was giving, you know, if I had some advice to give coaches, I'd, and I'm, you know, only going on my own opinions here, but I think, you know, like one of the, like in my opinion anyway, like one of the big mistakes that I see like a lot of coaches making is they talk too much. I think um, talking as a teaching tool is very limited. You know, I think people learn by doing and you can sort of talk on the run or you can, you know, create atmosphere on the run, you know, as you're, you know, as the group is actually doing something. I think that means you can keep your training shorter. Um, you know, the boys are more likely to enjoy them and they'll, and they'll keep coming. Um, like I know this is hard to do too, but I think I think being a coach, like in a lot of ways, is a bit like being a parent. I think you've got to put yourself last. I think like if your team gets beaten, you know, you've got to think, well, the players are hurting a lot more than what I am. You know, even though I'm hurt, you know, um, I think you've got to respect, you know, you've got to respect the players' feelings and almost try and put yourself in the players' shoes. You're like, what would they want to do at training tonight? Like, what would they want to hear at half time? You know, like, what would they want to hear before the game? 
And a lot, what would they want to hear after the game, you know? Um, yeah. You know, like I'm starting a new role with the New Zealand League, you know, in the next couple of weeks. I think, uh, you know, I think the first thing, you know, I've got to try and grow the game, obviously. I think areas like, you know, Waikato, Canterbury and Wellington, uh, you know, were very strong rugby league areas at one stage. Um, you know, I'm not saying they're not now, but I think there's a, you know, there's certainly some scope there to grow the game in those parts of the country. And, you know, Taranaki, um, Look, I just want to add some value to, you know, to a community that I've been part of just about all my life, really, so.